Hello everybody and welcome to the Working Class Movement Library Salford's Festival. We've got a fantastic lineup for you this evening. We've got bands, we've got readers, we've got a little bit of politics. It's all there for you. So we're going to kick off the evening but before I do I just want to say please if you can check out the Working Class Movement Library's website, become a friend, donate, um, buy one of these fabulous t-shirts that's been designed by one of our amazing trustees, Hazel Roberts, and um, many various different colours. So that's it. So sit back, get that laptop on, get that screen on, and enjoy the delights we've got for you this evening. Thank you. And roll a doobie. <laughs> Hi, we're All Girls Arson Club, and welcome to our basement. We wrote all these songs.
bath again. <laughs> I'm sweaty. Uh, uh, just kidding. <laughs>
I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you or me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. In Salt Lake, Joe, says I to him, him standing by my bed. They framed you on a murder charge, says Joe, but I ain't dead. Says Joe, but I ain't dead. The copper bosses killed you, Joe. They shot you, Joe, says I. Takes more than guns to kill a man. Says Joe, I didn't die. Says Joe, I didn't die. And standing there as big as life and smiling with his eyes, Joe says what they forgot to kill, went on to organise. Went on to organise. Joe Hill ain't dead, he says to me. Joe Hill ain't never died. Where working men are out on strike, Joe Hill is at their side. Joe Hill is at their side. From San Diego up to Maine, in every mine and mill, where workers strike and organise, says he, you'll find Joe Hill. Says he, you'll find Joe Hill. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you or me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. A Worker Reads History by Bertolt Brecht. Who built the seven gates of Thebes? The books are filled with the names of kings. Was it kings who haul the craggy blocks of stone? And Babylon, so many times destroyed, who built that city up each time? In which of Lima's houses, that city glittering with gold, lived those who built it? In the evening, when the Chinese wall was finished, where did the Masons go? Imperial Rome is full of arcs of triumph. Who reared them up? Over whom did the Caesars triumph? Byzantium lives in song. Were all her dwellings palaces? And even in Atlantis of the legend, the night the sea rushed in, the drowning men still bellowed for their slaves. Young Alexander conquered India. He alone. Caesar beat the Gauls. Was there not even a cook in his army? Philip of Spain wept as his fleet was sunk and destroyed. Were there no other tears? Frederick the Great triumphed in the Seven Years' War. Who triumphed with him? Each page of victory, at whose expense the victory bore. Every ten years a great man, who paid the piper. So many particulars, so many questions.
him electric, just from playing guitar. Mm.
Ibrahim Siran, Faces of Decadence, from A Short History of Decay. The weariness of long forgotten peoples hangs heavy on my eyelids. Hugo van Hofmannsthal. A civilization begins to decline the moment life becomes its sole obsession. Epochs of apogee cultivate values for their own sake. Life is only a means of realizing them. The individual is not aware of living. He lives, happy slave of the forms he engenders, tends and idolizes. Affectivity dominates and fills him. No creation without the resources of feeling, which are limited. Yet for the man who experiences only their wealth, they seem inexhaustible. This illusion produces history. In decadence, effective drying up permits only two modalities of feeling and understanding, sensation and idea. Now, it is by affectivity that we participate in the world of values, that we project a vitality into categories and norms. The activity of a, product, of a productive civilization consists in drawing ideas out of their abstract nothingness, in transforming concepts into myths. The transition from the anonymous individual to the conscious individual has not yet been made, yet it is inevitable. Measure it. In Greece, from Homer to the Sophists, in Rome, from the austere old republic to the wisdoms of the empire, in the modern world, from the cathedrals to 18th century lace. A nation cannot create indefinitely. It is called upon to give expression and meaning to a sum of values which are exhausted with the soul which has begotten them. The citizen wakens from a productive hypnosis. The reign of lucidity begins. The masses wield no more than empty categories. Myths turn back into concepts. That is decadence. And the consequences make themselves felt. The individual wants to live. He, can, he converts life into finality. He elevates himself to the rank of a minor exception. The ledger of these exceptions, constituting the deficit of a civilization, prefigures its effacement. Everyone achieves delicacy, but it is not the radiant stupidity of the dolt which accomplishes the work of the great. But is it not the radiant stupidity of the dolt which accomplishes the work of the great periods? According to Montesquieu, at the end of the empire, at the end of the empire, the Roman army consisted entirely of cavalry, but he neglects to supply us with the reason for this. Imagine the legionary saturated with glory, wealth, and debauchery after having traversed countless lands and having lost his faith and his force on contact with so many temples and vices. Imagine such a man on foot. He has conquered the world as an infantryman. He will lose it on horseback. Indolence invariably reveals a physiological incapacity to adhere any longer to the myths of the city. The emancipated soldier and the lucid citizen succumb to the barbarian. The discovery of life annihilates life. When an entire nation at various levels is in search of rare sensations, when, by the, by the subtleties of taste, it complicates its reflexes, it has acceded to a fatal pitch of superiority. Decadence is merely instinct gone impure under the action of consciousness. Hence, we cannot overestimate the importance of gastronomy in the existence of a collectivity. The conscious act of eating is an Alexandrian phenomenon. Barbarism feeds. Intellectual and religious eclecticism, sensual ingenuity, aestheticism, and the learned obsession of good living are the various signs of one and the same form of mind. When Gabius Apicius, when Gabius Apicius explored the African, the African coast for lobsters, without settling anywhere because he found none to his taste, 
He was a contemporary of the uneasy souls who worshipped the host of alien gods without finding satisfaction or rest among them. Rare sensations, diverse deities, parallel fruits of the same dryness, of the same curiosity without inner resources. Christianity appeared, a single God and fasting, and an age of triviality and the sublime began. A nation dies when it no longer has the strength to invent new gods, new myths, new absurdities. Its idols blur and vanish. It seeks them elsewhere and feels alone before unknown monsters. This too is decadence. But if one of these monsters prevails, another world sets itself in motion, crude, dim, intolerant, until it exhausts its God and emancipates itself from him. For man is free and sterile only in the interval when the gods die, slave and creative only in the interval when, as tyrants, they flourish. To mediate upon one's sensations, to know one is eating, is an ascension, is an accession of consciousness by which an elementary action transcends its immediate goal. Alongside intellectual disgust develops another, deeper and more dangerous, emanating from the viscera. It ends at the severest form of nihilism, the nihilism of repletion. The bitterest, consider the bitterest considerations cannot compare in their effects with the vision following an opulent banquet. Every meal which exceeds in time a few minutes and in dishes the necessity the necessities disintegrates or the necessities every meal which exceeds in time a few minutes and in dishes the necessities disintegrates our certitudes. Culinary abuse and seti satiety I don't know how to say that word, satiety, satiety, destroyed the empire more pitilessly than the oriental sects and the ill-assimilated Greek doctrines. We experience an authentic shudder of scepticism only around a copious table. The kingdom of heaven must have represented a temptation after such excesses or a deliciously perverse surprise in the monotony of digestion. Hunger seeks a way to sort salvation in religion. Satiety, a poison, <laughs> to be saved by viruses and in the indiscrimination of prayers and vices, to flee the world and wallow in it by the same action. That is indeed the apex of acrimony and of Alexandrian Alexandrianism. I'm not quite sure what that is, actually, to be honest. There is a plentitude of decline in every overripe civilization. Instincts, 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 instincts slacken. Pleasures dilate and no longer correspond to their biological function. The voluptuousness becomes an end in itself, its prolongation an art. The avoidance, the avoidance of orgasm, a technique, sexuality, a science. Methods and literary inspirations to multiply the channels of desire the imagination, tormented in order to, to diversify the preliminaries of release, the mind itself involved in a realm alien to its nature and over, it, over which it should have no purchase. All so many symptoms of the impoverishment of the blood and the morbid intellectualization of the flesh. Love conceived as ritual makes the intelligence sovereign in the empire of stupidity. Our automatism, automatism, automatisms, our auto automatisms suffer for it. Shackled, they lose the impatience to let loose an inadmissible contortion. The nerves become the theater of lucid discomforts and shudders. Sensation, in short, extends beyond its crude, beyond its crude duration, thanks to the skill of two torturers of studied voluptuousness. They are the individual who deceives the species and the blood too tepid to stun the mind, the blood chilled and thinned by ideas, the rational blood. <laughs>
How you doing today? Hope you're ready to do a fantastic painting with me. And I thought today we'd do a painting that's just a lot of fun and, and we'll have a good time together. Try to keep your stroke straight. Ooh, there we go. some color into the brush. Brush through paint there. A lot of paint in the brush. Set these clouds on fire. some color in.
lightly and then very gently blend it. Three hairs and some air right here. Paint in here. Let's give him a little friend that lives right there. Reflect what you feel. I'm having a bad day. My paintings look entirely different if I'm having a super day. think about it or plan it, it happens. And that's that's the joy of painting. Plant Enterprises Incorporated, bringing quality paints, mediums, stencils, and worldwide. yourself. No pressure. If there's a secret to it, that's probably it. Biggest mistake made is applying too much pressure. pretend he was a whisper floating across the mountains. Touch, no pressure. If he didn't, didn't hang on, his hand would just literally float away. It's that light of a touch. Tremendous amount of power you have in the canvas here. There. Very delicate touch. And you can touch.
change it. Highlights go with one angle, shadows at the other. it up and then pull them. There. something bothers you, change it. Once again, this is your world. You have absolute control over it. Russell's wiggle.
Comrades in the Dark by Bobby Sands. There came a splendid golden sun across the darkened skies. It woke the bondsman from his dream as it fell upon his eyes. It lit the ways of freedom's path, sent forth the singing lark and bore a weeping blossom upon the flowers in the dark. They bloomed by country lane and town in freedom's fragrant scent, giving heart to a weary folk when dark days came and went. And grew they strong and beautiful midst fortune cold and stark. The fairest flowers of their kind, these roses of the dark. The winds of war came sweeping cruel, the blossom would not cry. Oh, how it broke the freeman's heart to see the first rose die. Some soldiers plucked the garden's joy and left a burning mark upon the silver petal bloom now fettered in the dark. These flowers weep in dank cold cells, no sun to light the gloom. They suffer tortures vilely scorn to wither in their bloom. But never they yield these lovely things, oh here they freedom's mark. They are the light to guide the poor, these flowers in the dark. I care not should we free men die. To see the garden flower and humble bluebells lift their heads to rise in all their power. I hold a tear torn sore in art, it were here a Joan of Arc, tis each one of these saintly flowers who be in dungeons dark.
bitch, get out. What do you think you're taking from me? Close the door, on the way out. You left your pencils in my house. Not dim, babes. What are you on about? I took you to the pub. You met Larry, Larry, Penny and Terry. And they love you. Come on, babe. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Come on, boys, fight for them. And so you my phone.
Jeez. Olive Morris. What would you say about Boris? With him chat about victimization. How am I try to part for we nation? 27 years. <sighs> Too short. Olive Elaine Morris, you brought with you from Jamaica, St. Catherine, age nine, the fire, the expos, the blood clot swine who still to this day I put the knee pan we neck, try tech with it with speech, try keep with it and pet. Then when we rise, then one we call we fret. Then arrest you. If you step in out of your lane, if you try to save one diplomat, brother, then beat you just the same. That's the right colour for your skin, they said. Though they left you with bruises, still Olive refuses to shut up the mount to hold back the fire. If you Morris, you only did lift we up higher. When the paraffin heater did left with the dead, march, Morris, march to the housing instead. Left people pitney for the council for look after, told them change things. We now bring them home to disaster. She made things happen. Show we how we run the show. Come from London to Manchester, Mossai to blow, jeez. Olive Morris set up committee and co-op a Black Panther movement. I that how she grew up. Left school before qualification gave out. A economics and social science degree. I that she about. Olive Lay Morris. We pour libation for you, even though they didn't put your fierce pandy pound. Thank you for helping us stand on this year ground. You were born in Jamaica, just like for me daddy there. Died of the same cancer that tried to kill me mammy here. Olive Elaine Morris. For the homeless, for the women, for black power you stood, for your sake and sacrifice. Olive Morris, we come good. Rest in power, Olive Elaine Morris. When I put on my clothes, I take both arms and I construct the best way to enter When I put on my trousers, I reach far to the floor I shift from one foot to the other. I perform events. I create structures. And I work. And I dance. And I practice to provide for expression and understanding the answers 
Tell them in England if they ask what brought us to these wars, to this plateau beneath this grave manifold of stars. It was not fraud or foolishness, glory, revenge or pay. We came because our open eyes could see no other way. There was no other way of keeping man's flickering truth alight. And these stars will witness that our course burned brief and not less bright. Beyond the wasted olive groves and the furthest lift of land, there calls a country that was ours and here shall be regained. Shine on us, remedied and real. Green water, silken meats. Rivers of home refresh our path whom here your influence leads. Here in a parched and stranger place, we fight for England free. The good our fathers won for us. The land they hope to see. We are sisters, wicked sisters, rule by ruling mind. We are sisters, wicked sisters, we are not your kind. We are sisters, wicked sisters, rule by ruling mind. We are sisters, wicked sisters, we are not your kind. I have gone out, a possessed witch, haunting the black air, braver at night, dreaming evil. I have done my hitch over the plain houses, light by light, lonely thing, twelve-fingered out of mind. A woman like that is not a woman quite. I have been her kind. We are sisters, wicked sisters, we are not your kind. We are 
I have found the warm caves in the woods, filled them with skillets, carving shelves, closets, silks, innumerable goods. Fix the suppers for the worms and the elves, whining, rearranging the disaligned. A woman like that is misunderstood. I have been her kind. Driver, wave my nude arms at villages going by, learning the last bright root survivor. Were your blades still by my thigh, and my ribs crack were your wheels wide? A woman like that is not ashamed to die. I have been her kind. gentleness, all oh, that can adorn and bless art thou. Let deeds, not words, express thine exceeding loveliness. Let a great assembly be of the fearless and the free on some spot of English ground where the plains stretch wide around. From the corners uttermost of the bounds of English coast, from every hut, village and town, where those who live and suffer moan for others' misery or their own. Ye who suffer woes untold, or to feel or to behold, your lost country bought and sold with a price of blood and gold. Let a vast assembly be, and with great solemnity declare with measured words that ye are as God made ye free. Be your strong and simple words, keen to wound as sharpened swords, and wide as targets let them be, with the shade to cover ye. Let the charged artillery drive, till the dead earth seems alive 
with the clash of clanging wheels and the tramp of horses' heels. Stand ye calm and resolute, like a forest, close and mute, with folded arms and looks which are the weapons of unvanquished war. And if then the tyrants dare, let them ride among you there, slash and stab and maim and hew. What they like, let them do. With folded arms and steady eyes, and little fear and less surprise, look upon them as they slay, till their rage has died away. And that slaughter to the nation shall steam up like inspiration, eloquent, oracular, a volcano heard afar. And these words shall then become like oppression's thundered doom, ringing through each heart and brain, heard again, again, again. Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep have fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few.
Lambs and carrots, 16th century Holland and Barrow, do you? Suck my hat, then good goodbye. Every eye that sees is guilty of a subtle kind of cruelty. The love of the day is not the night. This is for Boris Johnson and his cabinet. Actually, it's just for Boris Johnson. Like a nightclub in the morning, you're the bitter end. Like a recently disinfected shit house, you're clean round the bend. You give me the horrors. Too bad to be true. All of my tomorrows are lousy cause of you. You put the shat in shatter. You put the pain in Spain. Your germs are splattered about, your face is just a stain. You're certainly no raver, commonly known as a drag. Do us all a favor. Here, wear this polythene bag. You're like a dose of scabies. I've got you under my skin. You make life a fairy tale. Grim. People mention murder whenever you arrive. I'd consider killing you if I thought you were alive. You've got this slippery quality. It makes me think of phlegm and a dual personality. I ate both of them. Your bad breath, vamps disease, destruction and decay. Please, please, please take yourself away. Like death at a birthday party, you ruin all the fun like a sucked and spat out smarty. You're no use to anyone. Like the shadow of a guillotine on a dead consumptive space. Speaking as an outsider, what do you think of the human race? What kind of creature bore you? Was it some kind of bat? They can't find a good word for you. I can. Twat. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. I'd like to say thank you so much to all our contributors, to our wonderful artists, to our readers and musicians for giving up their time for this, this evening's festival. And I hope you will check out the Working Class Movement Library, become a friend, get involved, volunteer, come down and visit the library and see its amazing resource on the history of the Working Class Movement. And get yourself a t-shirt, fantastic t-shirt, and there's tote bags. What more could you want? Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you've had a lovely bank holiday weekend and see you at the library soon. <laughs>